Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Mittman. Welcome to the show that takes you inside the minds of today's hottest sports stars and a lot more. We're going to answer the question, what the heck were they thinking? Let's go over and meet our panelists. Dr. Jared Spencer, a clinical and sports psychologist in private practice, and Dr. Jim Brennan, a mental skills and performance consultant for Villanova Athletics and the champ himself, Larry Holmes. And right now, it's time for Knockout Topics. Well, the uh, NBA would like to move the All-Star game away from uh, New Orleans, saying eh, it's just too bad down there. I mean, a lot of crime. Am I hearing this right? Uh, the NBA calling a town too bad, Doc? Well, you're hearing it right, but I, we all know that since Katrina, the, the crime rate has risen in New Orleans, but uh, I think it would be just as um, justifiable for the people in New Orleans to say, why do we want the NBA players to come to our town? We have enough crime. Oh, come on, they got to go to New Orleans. Let's talk about dollars and cents. You said it best a little while back. J-O-B-S, a four-letter word, jobs. we got to bring the jobs by bringing the NBA and the All-Star Game to New Orleans. Let's pump some money in this, into a city that needs it. You know, I kind of agree with you for the first time since we started the show. For the first time, I'm going to write this down and mark this down. <laughs> I agree with you because, you know what, New Orleans, just like any other city, all city have crime. You got it in New York, you got it in Philadelphia, you got it in Las Vegas, you got it all over the world in Chicago. New Orleans is, need help now. They need to get people in there so the government, because the government is not doing it. The government is not helping or spending a dime in New Orleans, you so know, the, we need to help The champs out. got it right. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the government has totally dropped the ball uh, with, with helping New Orleans, so um, wouldn't it be nice, at least if the sporting world would say, hey, you know, we're going to be there to support you, but instead, you know, they, they want to run away from the problem, just like the government did. Well, it, it, speaking of running away from the problem, the one thing I don't like about the, uh, the reaction of people of New Orleans, uh, New Orleans was always a town about the hustle. And uh, geologically, it was fragile. Sociologically, it was fragile. Now we get a flood, and everybody's waiting for somebody else to do something about it. So they, they, they have more of a mentality of the victim. But it's somebody else's problem, the government's problem, and, and they're, they're waiting for somebody to deal with it. Well, you know, our government always going all over the world, helping everybody else. Why can't he help our own people right here in the United States? He goes over in Iraq and spends $200 billion every week. And he came and helped the people in New Orleans. And now they're trying to take the basketball game out of there. I think the All-Star game should be in New Orleans. People should protest it if they're anywhere else outside of New Orleans. Let these people live and let those people try to regain their uh, And let, let's recognize that these NBA players, if we appeal to their more sensitive side, to their more generous side, we could get them into New Orleans and bring out their best of them. Look, they went to Las Vegas. We know what happens in Vegas, blah, 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 right? But if we get them to New Orleans, perhaps we would see them kind of helping out the homeless, contributing a lot more. This could be a beautiful thing. It's too bad the NBA is not seeing it as such. So the other side of this is it's a scary thing to take these NBA players and their entourage into you a place know, like New what, Orleans. I'm going to disagree with you. They're not scary. Those guys are big guys. They're not afraid of anything. Matter of fact, people will welcome them. And it's not going to be a crime down there. You might find one or two pickpocketers down there here and there, but that's going to go on anywhere. I think they should go on down there and do their thing and let uh, yeah. New Orleans be seen. The, again, the champ, the champ is right for these NBA uh, superstars uh, making millions of dollars to go down there and support these poor people that, that need the help. I mean, isn't this just a, a great statement for them to make instead of saying, eh, I don't want anything to do with them I down there? I think it there. would be. And, and as I was saying before, part of the fear, I think, for the Players Association is that we have guys who can find trouble. So uh, we don't want to put them where they, they're more likely to find trouble. No, you know what? You know, people are going to find trouble if, in the backyard if they're looking for it. And these people are not going to be looking for trouble. And the NBA people are going to be by themselves. They're not going to be doing it. Only ones that they're going to have to really worry about is the people that, that come in with the tickets and buy the tickets. They might get pickpocketed, but it's not going to be anything big. I bet you any amount, amount of money he'll go over real well down there in New Orleans. You think Pac-Man will be there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, a story that, that's been certainly making headlines uh, throughout the, the entire nation. Um, the principal of the Nichman Middle School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, mm. John Acera, um, really uh, doing things that, uh, well, 
make the uh, the uh, cover of a, a tabloid magazine, uh, obviously doing things uh, with, with drugs, uh, right in his own office uh, of the middle school. And, and you got to ask, um, what what the heck was he thinking, Doc? <laughs> so, That's it, you know. I, I don't know this man, and I don't, I don't know anything about this situation outside of what I've read in the newspaper. But what I do know is, you know, it reminds me of this quote, you know, hate the sin, not the sinner, that really this is a disease. We're talking about addiction. It's very important Doc, to recognize that this is a coating. disease. He had it. Doc, stop he has it. Stop sugarcoating. You guys are always sugarcoating. <laughs> I'm everything. not sugarcoating. The man, the man is a junkie. The man's up went there. It got by, and nobody seen that this man uses drugs. This man uses drugs, so therefore he don't care about your kids or my kids or anybody's kids. He gonna sell him some drugs. Why? So he can get some more. I mean, the, anytime a guy sits in school in a classroom with his clothes off, okay, you can do that. Lock the door. What the <laughs> heck are you thinking? Why would somebody walk I in? I understand uh, what you're saying. This guy is a junkie. You, you're he right. need to be punished. The, and the, should the not be around. Of his, are you his is, defense lawyer? I am not uh, his defense lawyer. all addiction. Now. But in, in terms of addiction, and I understand addiction, that the nature of it is selfishness. You're right, that he is going to be... Uh, you know, selfish by nature because of the addiction. That's part of the problem. But let's hate the Look, problem, the man, not I'm the gonna, person. I'm going to go back and say it one more time. He's three times seven. He should know all the rules. You know, <laughs> when you grow up, your mama said, don't you touch that. Got to burn your hand. You touch it, burns your hand. You holler out. You <laughs> learn from that. I'm sure he learned a long time ago. He's, he's educated, been to college. He's not he's the principal of the school. He knows better. Good point. And, and, and I have to ask you this, Doc. What kind of message... Uh, are we sending to our students, we're telling them, don't do this, don't do this, and, and, and their principal is, is, is using drugs during uh, classroom time. Are, are we kind of sending yeah, right a on, mixed Michael. message here? Both my ears are ringing here, by the way, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll weigh in. But I, the I think seat there in the middle. <laughs> no, and I, I believe that we hate to sin, not to sinner, but without a sinner, there's no sin. And, and, uh, and even, even though addiction can make, make one's will very weak, there's still an awareness that the addicted person knows that he's addicted. Right. He knows that he's doing the wrong right. thing. He knows he can get help, and he knows he's responsible for all these kids. So, so why didn't he get he help, Doc? It. All right, why didn't he give you a call? We'll put your number on the screen. Sure. Uh, but, but why didn't he give you a call uh, and say, look, Doc, I've got a problem. Um, let's let's g help me out of this here. Sure, that, that, may be, that, that is part of the problem, that sometimes in this world, and this is so sad, the people that need the help the most aren't willing to take it. And there were probably a lot of people that reached out to this person and many other people that struggle with addiction, but they weren't willing well, to take it. That, that goes from a person who's not feeling confidence in themselves, not feeling good about, his, about himself. But he should feel good about himself because he's an educated principal. He's in that position. He should feel good of his accomplishments. But no, he but let it him. Doesn't he, let, he let. Yeah, it doesn't. No. It, let, it let us down. He let me down and let you down. Let our kids down. He let the whole community addiction down. Addiction doesn't he, matter if you're if yeah, you're poor, you, if you're he, rich. It wouldn't be addiction if you didn't get into it. It doesn't it. matter. All right, let, it, me, let me ask you this. Let's, it let's, wouldn't be addiction if it didn't start it. All right, and I agree with everything the champ said, but let's let's really delve inside uh, uh, the human mind. Sure. Um, did he ever at any point say, uh, I know this is wrong, but I, I can't stop myself? And no. furthermore, did he ever think, hey, you know, uh, I could... I could get caught. Uh, I mean, and, and what a mess that would be getting caught sure. selling drugs in my principal's office, surrounded by a thousand students. Does anybody in that si situation sure. ever think of being caught, or doesn't that enter their minds? Well, again, I don't know this individual, so it's difficult for me to comment on his specific situation. But with the, with, the, with the nature of the disease <laughs> and such, you know, um, people that have, have addictions have the highest rate of lying among any mental health population out there. And so clearly, he's going to lie to get his needs met. It's very self-centered, and, and clearly, there's a brokenness here. They're trying to put it together as best they can, but it's not working. He's not caring. He's not thinking about you. He's not thinking about nobody. He's thinking about himself in the next fit, next high. That's all he's thinking about. And after he comes down, he says, damn, I shouldn't have done that. And then he'll go back and do it again and, and again and again. Now I'm spilling water right here. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, you, you got him hot. He started got going to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. And I think now that we need to deal with it from 
a, All from right. a public standpoint, we need to think not so much about him, but about other people. He's got he to pay the price. But I want to say this, you know, Dr. Jim, obviously you work a lot with education in the school district, you're, and you're right about, you know, well, poor, no poor judgment in the, in, the, in the principal's office. You know, there needs to be some recognition that something needs to happen with the school to protect yes. these kids, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a break, give the champ <laughs> a, a chance to clean up the water. No and when we come back, a uh, real uh, controversial uh, uh, topic about Lehigh University. We're going to take a look at that and a lot more when we come back with what the heck were they thinking? What the heck are you thinking, Doc? <laughs> Hi, I'm smoking Joe Fraser Sharp as a razor. What the heck were they thinking? The Flemington Department Store, located on Route 31 in Flemington. Come see why we're still growing after 40 years of great service. In our apparel department, you'll see one of the largest selections of men's, women's, and kids' clothing, workwear, and footwear. Update your home with the latest in flooring products. Flemington Department Store will customize any rug for any room. Need new furniture? Stop in and see our selection of name brand quality home furnishings. The Flemington Department Store. Quality and value for over 40 years. Hi, this is Mike Mittman. Are you looking for a vehicle like brand new, only one, two, three years old? Do what I do. Come to Eberhardt Motors. Isn't that right, Eric? That's right, Mike. We've been saying that for years. At Eberhardt Motors, I handpick only the best, and there's nothing here I wouldn't put in my own driveway. And Eric, don't forget, all the cars are Advanced Star certified and ready to roll right off the lot. Of course I know, Mike. I'm the owner. Eberhardt Motors, been here doing it right for over 80 years. Nice suit. You too. What the heck were they thinking? C.E. Roth has men's fashions that goes the whole nine yards. Get a new look, an image update, get a suit that suits you. Over three generations of experience and a big selection of top name designers. C.E. Roth has fashion with flair. And you will be a knockout. C.E. Roth, suit up. Do you love sports? Then you'll love Service Electric's Digital Advantage tier, featuring 51 additional channels, plus these great sports channels. You'll also love what's included with basic cable at no additional charge. And when it comes to local sports, nobody beats two sports. Service Electric Cable TV offers more sports programming than any other cable TV or satellite provider in the Lehigh Valley. Take advantage of the special offers going on right now. Call Service Electric Cable TV today, the Lehigh Valley's only total digital network. Welcome back to the show and a special welcome to those new stations joining us around the country. Right now, it's time for Quick Jabs. Well, a real controversy uh, recently involving Lehigh and Army uh, basketball. And uh, wow, Doc, this is a, a, a real hot potato. Yeah, we're going to show it right here, where the army, the army player comes down and he clearly releases the ball after the uh, after the clock has expired. The referees run off the court. They didn't have a telecast that they that they uh, agreed before the game that they could review calls with, but they did have the online telecast. That's what we're watching here, and so clearly, it's. I mean, the referees. Oftentimes, they don't want to be judged or, or embarrassed, but they, their job is to get it right, and they clearly got it wrong. Well, they, they got it wrong, and I can understand why Lehigh is you know, pr pretty upset about this, but it almost seems to me like, did you see the way that guy came all the way down the court? There's four seconds left on the clock. All they had to do was stand still and make him run around them. They may be really mad at themselves and projecting it onto the referees. Well, when, when you have a game this close, it's, it's always true that the, the losers can say they played well enough to win, and the winners, they, they played well enough to lose. But the referees, aside from all that, the referee's job is to get it right. And they had the discretion that to, to make the judgment call to review that tape. And yeah, their job was to what? get it right. This is college, and the referee don't have a chance to review that stuff. So therefore, no, he, he, they, he, you know, they, they didn't have to do it. I mean, they called the shot. They right. didn't want to do it. They didn't do it, so let them go. They lost the game by uh, somebody making a mistake. So big, get over it. But sometimes the rest of us are the same. Move on! Move on! I think Army's I, over it. Army's yeah, over it. Yeah, real quickly, they're over it. Yeah. 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 Move on, you know? <laughs> All right. Short uh, sweet. Wrestler Rulon Gardner. Uh, Rel hasn't been a lucky guy uh, having his third brush with 
death doc. Uh, you're a performance uh, expert. What a performance this guy put on. Well, and this is not the first time. Uh, what we're referring to is that Rulon Gardner was, was involved in a plane crash in Lake Powell, Arizona, and, uh, and actually swam, survived the plane crash and swam for an hour in 44 degree water and survived and then had to stay, uh, stay in, out in the elements overnight and survive the cold. This is a very tough-minded individual. Well, tough-minded enough to beat the all-time greatest wrestler in history, the 13-time uh, world champion Alexander uh, Gerlin, or uh, Carlin, from, from Russia. Roland Gardner beat him in the Olympics a little while back, if you remember this. Then he actually got a third place uh, at the last Olympics because he lost a toe in a snowmobile accident where he was frostbitten and had to survive. This guy has survived three brushes with death. And was one, hit by a car on, and was on, hit on by a motorcycle. Yeah, on a motorcycle. Yeah. You know, the only sad thing about it, well, Fox is very upset they didn't have cameras there. What a great reality show this would have been. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and this, this was the reality for Rulon Gardner is that that he didn't, he evidently did not start to feel sorry for himself, which most people do, and right. that starts a downward spiral. He, he uh, must have set his mind to, what can I do to get out of this situation? Well, you know what, you guys are making a big thing out of it, but you know, God got a plan. And he's the best of planner. It wasn't his time. He was not going anywhere. He could have swam 400 miles. It was not going to go nowhere. When the man calls you, then you're gone. And for the first <clears> time, <throat> I want to say, yeah. I agree with you. Same but I'm going to add something else to it. for another day. <laughs> but it's not, you know, let me add that oh, in, 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 in wrestling, <clears throat> you don't play wrestling. You play basketball. You play baseball. But in wrestling, that's a way of life. It's extreme conditioning. I really think the skill set that he learned as a wrestler translated directly in this situation for him to survive. The, the things he learned in wrestling definitely made him a better uh, an individual able to survive the situation. What, what he learned is determination. Determination. Well, I said. like that word. We'll remember, write that yes. down. <laughs> determination. Speaking about determination, <clears throat> was it determination? Or was it a little help besides that? Uh, steroid scandal uh, really um, uh, rocking the whole sports world. Yeah, it's been there. We all know that. But recently, new allegations about even mail-ordered uh, ordered steroids. Uh, uh, Gary Matthews Jr. from the Angels, uh, many other athletes. We don't even know because the government isn't releasing their cards yet. They're kind of holding them close to the vest, uh, the names that have been involved in this mail-order steroid. But one of the names, curiously enough, Champ, well, uh, Vander know, Holyfield on steroids. What what a shock that may be. Well, it, it, it's not a shock, not to me <laughs> anyway. I've been telling people that for a long time. They said, "Larry, you got a big mouth to talk too much." There's nothing, wrong, you know, wrong with this guy. This guy's not taking steroids. They always call me a liar, a liar, a liar. So I never been able to say what I want to say. But hey, now it's coming out. They're gonna say, "Well, you know, Larry was telling the truth." Well, now it's your show. You can say what you want to say. <laughs> But I, I still can't tell you this whole if he takes drugs or not, or use steroids or not. I know he got the body. I know he had lose, lost his hair. But you know he performs like he's on something. All right, Doc. Let me stop you for one second. You're the uh, performance expert. Um, everybody was so shocked. We go back to the first uh, Tyson fight where uh, Evander was a big uh, uh, underdog. All of a sudden he shows up uh, the day before the fight for the weigh-in, and everybody, the, the the press from around the world there to cover it were shocked at the appearance of Evander Holyfield. He actually looked twice the size of Mike Tyson. Uh, a little vitamin A, B, C, and D here yeah, or what? We need to remind ourselves that he started out, he was a light heavyweight. He came out of the light heavyweight division and he was so unnaturally chiseled at that time that any, any, anybody who's been but around in this the sport, one fight it, it, in it, the Tyson fight. You know what, I tell you what, Holyfield, you know, you know, he used a little steroids, I believe that he did, to, to boost up his weight and, and his muscle back that he has. Uh, he lifts a lot of weights. He always lifts 300, 400 pounds before for uh, a fight and everything. And, you know, steroids, you know, he took it. But, you know, it would tell to take the toe on. I don't recommend that for any athlete. Come on, they, say it ain't it, so. Uh, please, say it ain't <laughs> so. Tell me Evander Holyfield didn't do the juice. I don't want to. I don't want to okay, believe that he, he's an he, amazing he didn't, individual. He didn't, he didn't do the juice. No. Thank you. But I'm gonna tell I, you what you want to hear. Maybe I'm in to, denial. Let me ask you why? Why is, hasn't Larry ever been accused of taking steroids? Maybe you're not chiseled. You weren't chiseled enough. No, oh, you know, I'm just, man. I'm just Did you see the rock skinny. solid abs he used to have? No, I don't have no abs. I don't have. He's only been accused of being tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah, and cute. Yeah, and cute. He's been accused of being cute. I have a lot of mobility, man. When we come back, stay away from things. We're trying to cut me off. <laughs> when we come back, the champ will return, and the doctors are going to return and uh, answer your questions, take a look at your emails. When we come right back with what the heck were they thinking?
Hi, this is Mike Mittman. Are you looking for a vehicle like brand new, only one, two, three years old? Do what I do. Come to Eberhardt Motors. Isn't that right, Eric? That's right, Mike. We've been saying that for years. At Eberhardt Motors, I handpick only the best, and there's nothing here I wouldn't put in my own driveway. And Eric, don't forget, all the cars are Advanced Star certified and ready to roll right off the lot. Of course I know, Mike. I'm the owner. Eberhardt Motors, been here doing it right for over 80 years. The Flemington Department Store, located on Route 31 in Flemington. Come see why we're still growing after 40 years of great service. In our apparel department, you'll see one of the largest selections of men's, women's, and kids' clothing, workwear, and footwear. Update your home with the latest in flooring products. Flemington Department Store will customize any rug for any room. Need new furniture? Stop in and see our selection of name brand quality home furnishings. The Flemington Department Store, quality and value for over 40 years. I'm Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And I'm Mike Mittman, host of the show that takes you inside the minds of today's hottest sports stars and beyond. The doctors are in the house. Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Spencer. And I'm Dr. Jim Brennan. We're going to answer the question, What, what the heck were they thinking? Join us each and every Monday night at 8.30 and Sundays at 8 for What the Heck Were They Thinking? Welcome back to the show. We're going to take a look at the questions that you, the viewers, have sent in. If you've got a, a question for uh, the docs, you'd like to say hi to the champ or hi to me, real easy to do. You can email us, askthedocs at yahoo.com. That's all one word, askthedocs at yahoo.com. Let's take a look at our email. Docs, I am sure that you heard of the Bluffton baseball team that was in uh, the accident last week where some of the players died. How does a team rebound after experiencing such a tragedy? And that was sent in by Sonny and Twig. And uh, Doc, a, a real, real tough one. How, how do you rebound from a, 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 a horrendous tragedy like that? Yeah, and our, and, our, and our thoughts and prayers really go out to all the individuals involved with this. This really was a tragedy. One key factor here is support. When an emotional situation happens where there's a tragic event like this, the number one factor in how a person rebounds is support, the support system. So what I would say is support each other. The other thing that I want to mention is that in the five stages of loss, the first three are going to be shock, denial, then anger. Expect that you're going to go through shock for about a week or two, and then some denial. This didn't really happen. And then the next one is going to be this anger phase, which can last quite a long time because, again, another word for anger is hurt. So there's going to be a lot of hurt, but you can get through this with a lot of support. I agree with you, Dr. Jared, and, and already this, this team, we have a, a, a college and a team that already is its own community, and so they, I'm sure they're all sharing, uh, digging down a little bit deeper and showing their values, and uh, I think that this is when you stand up for what you believe in and you show what you're all about, and uh, no matter how bad it gets, when you can activate your hope and, and, uh, and pride and love, uh, you will never fall completely apart. Dr. Jared, you know I just what? want to say so on a professional <clears throat> level. I'm sure you know you deal with this, uh, uh, you know, quite a lot and, and, and counseling sure. people, and uh, and I'm sure it is never uh, when you have people in your office never uh, a, a, an easy thing to do. But but by working it, uh, working with people, you're able to work them through this. Oh, sure, absolutely. It's important to say. I know that these are athletes involved here. Don't neglect the emotional side of this. Pay particular attention to that. And I'm sure that the counselors and the school is really rallying around the emotional side of it. Psychological help can be a huge advantage in the recovery process. You know what? M my way of thinking is, thank God it wasn't me. You know, and you know we feel bad that it, that things like this happen, but thank God it wasn't me. So I just try to keep it on going. But I want to send out my condolences to uh, Scott Israel. He just died, 41 years old, had a leukemia, and or I don't even remember exactly what he had, but he just died, a young guy. 
heck of a yeah. guy. A tragedy. Exactly. Tragedy. Anytime yeah. there's loss, it really but, makes us appreciate life. But you know life. what? Well said. Life goes on. I'm not going to stop doing what yeah. I've been doing, and I don't recommend anybody else to do the same. Get over it. All right, we're going to, uh, uh, again, if you'd like to send us an email, say hi to us. Uh, e easy to do. Ask the docs at yahoo.com. All one word. Ask the docs at yahoo.com. It's time for our uh, Bonehead Award of the Week. Right behind you, if you want to hand me that, Doc. Yeah, and our, right our uh, peak, I can't, I can't do that without, <laughs> there we got it. All right, right this is it. We're going to keep you honest. If you're doing something wrong, we're going to give you the, uh, the bone. Um, champ, you got a bonehead? I, my bonehead goes out to the principal man who's selling drugs out there to the kids. He needs to be punished, dealt with, and punished, and dealt with again. That's enough for this guy. <laughs> I got to give a shout out to my my daughter. Happy birthday to my daughter, Candy. Happy and birthday, Candy. Happy birthday, Happy Candy. birthday, <laughs> and Denise. Happy birthday, and uh, Tyrone, and Shower. I, I think I said her name. Are we gonna <laughs> sing or what? Denise, yeah, we're going to sing. Okay. Tyrone and Shower, happy, well, y'all know what we're talking about. <laughs> happy birthday to you guys. Happy birthday to you. Oh, man. <laughs> Help us, please, please. Doc. What a song. Uh, yeah. uh, my, my bonehead award goes out to Cornbread Maxwell, who's a former Celtics player, and, and Cornbread is now the, the color commentator. And uh, he, he criticized a call by female official Violet Palmer the other night by saying she should be back in the kitchen. And then he went on to say, why don't you make me some ham and eggs? And it's such a cheap shot because she's a qualified NBA referee. If you want to, if, Cornbread, if you want to, to criticize her ability as a referee or criticize the call. Is she black? Don't, yes. Well, she can yeah. cook some cornbread. So, <laughs> but it's a, it's a cheap shot to say, to, to put the sexist remark in there. Yeah, it's cheap to put her in there with the cornbread because that's associated with black people. Don't be surprised if the NWACP is not on their butt. Sounds to me like Cornbread needs to go to some sensitivity training. Oh, yeah. you, he yeah. ought to see you also. I <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. My, my bonehead award goes to the New Orleans Saints, the football team. They let go of Joe Horn when the chips were down and uh, New Orleans needed a hero. Who stepped up to the plate? Who was handing out food to the homeless? Joe Horn. Why'd you let him go? He wanted to retire there. Bonehead award to the New Orleans Saints football. Dr. Jarrett, for doing it's that. a business. If he wanted to be a humanitarian, good for him. And he helped out. <laughs> That doesn't mean that, that he's going to stay. He's yeah, going to stay in the NFL longer. They're, no. they're, they're running a, a business, business there. Yeah. That's, that's why they call it the front office. That's you know? right. Hey, hey, Mike, I got to do this. And I got to do it again. I got to do it right. I want to say happy birthday to my daughter, Candy, because, you know, she's 27 years old. She's a sweetheart. Would you like me to sing and to I her? Gotta it. I got to say it. And okay. I want you to I wanna say happy birthday to Tyrone, Shower, Denise, and... One of my favorite sister in law, Wanda. Ah! Oh. All the birthdays. Hey, Wanda, happy, happy birthday. birthday. But, but they don't drink. That's so good. I'm not buying them in there. All right, <laughs> it's time for our Peak Performance Award of the Weekend. We got a lot of it, but I want to give mine to you, Champ, uh, uh, along with everything else in your, your bars and restaurants. Give me the money. You're, you're opening, uh, you're opening a, a, a brand new uh, uh, restaurant and nightclub with jazz and everything, too. Yeah, huh? it's called Step Up. You're not going to be able to come in there on a the weekend with your head turning around, your pants hanging down. You ain't going to be able to come in there anyway like that. Can I so come in? You can come in there if you uh, look like you're looking up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have nice class for you. Uh, we want everybody to come on down. All right, you got, a, you got a peak? My peak award goes to Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes? We'll, yeah. we'll second that emotion. <laughs> my, my peak form goes to Larry Holmes because I'm sitting with here, we're here with you guys every Monday and I have to go through this. <laughs> I, I, I second that emotion. All right. Okay, <laughs> my, my peak performance goes to, uh, to Villanova basketball coach Jay Wright and his point guard, Scotty Reynolds, uh, they went to UConn, University of Connecticut on Wednesday, which has been a house of horrors for them. And in the practice before this game, Coach Wright really challenged Scotty Reynolds to pick it up and be uh, what he called a Big East guard. Reynolds responded by scoring 40 points. So uh, he, knew, he knew when to push the right button, and, and Scotty Reynolds knew how to respond. I got no, my peak one, I forgot about it. It goes to Reverend D uh, Jenkins. Uh, he got a dame on the 28th of January. He's now Pastor Jenkins. So Eddie Jenkins is now a pastor. That was and my pick. Congratulations, and congratulations. To Quickly, we're almost sure. Out of Tom time. Frenzy, Lafayette College senior, wrestler, born without legs. He's going to the Nationals. Great article in the Eastern Express this morning. Check that out. Also, peak performance to Mr. Larry Holmes do for doing the show oh. with some w a wet lap because he spilled the, the, the glass oh. in the beginning. Peak performance to you. Wet lap and all. We're about out of time for the doctor. Thank Stock, you, Don't rush it. Dr. Jared Spencer <laughs> and Dr. Jim Brennan for the champ hey. himself.
I'm Mike Mittman. We'll see you next week when we'll again ask, what, what the, the heck, heck were they, they thinking? thinking?